we address the concept of why we see the repetition in the frequency domain because of the upsampling. Uh, uh, I think the time is right that we discuss this concept of the Euler's formula, the concept of phasors, and uh, we'll try to do the decomposition of the Euler's formula so that theta that we see, um, we'll try to decompose theta into omega and t, and we'll try to find out some relationship uh, geometrically using the Euler's formula. So in order to understand the Euler's formula, the first we'll try to build the case and uh, what we'll try to do is first I will introduce you with the concept of phases and uh, the concept of vectors first and we'll try to decompose the vectors into its projections and then um, we'll look into the Euler's formula uh, and we'll try to derive the relationship how it is related to the vector uh, concept and then we'll try to decompose the Euler's formula the theta into omega and t and try to visualize in geometrical sense. Okay, so um, to start with, we can uh, start off with the vectors, concept of vectors. I suppose most of you would be aware um, in the high schools about the concept of vectors, but I thought that it is important that we um, address uh, this concept here as well in order to make a case building uh, step. Okay, so um, if you're aware, well and good. If you're not aware, then uh, you can just go through these videos. Um, so let's say to start with that I have got some vector okay and let's say this this black screen that you see um, it is some free space okay you are in space and there you are seeing something a vector like this in this direction okay now the sense of this direction will only come if you have some if you relate this vector with some reference without some reference you cannot say then which direction it is pointing so if you are in space for example um, you can relate everything with refer with reference to the earth or with reference to the sun or with reference to some constellations right but if there is complete everything is black you don't know which thing is pointing to where right so the same concept applies here in vector as well so what what we do is that um, we try to uh, visualize the vector uh, with reference to the dimensions and as you can see that um, uh, you would be aware that we are more used to the dim two dimensions than three dimensions right on the plane so if we relate this vector so what I'll try to do is I will try to draw two axes and I will call one as the horizontal axis okay I will call this guy as the horizontal axis this is my horizontal axis okay this is my horizontal axis and I will call a vertical axis uh, like this such a way that they are perpendicular to each other right so the angle between them is 90 degrees I call this as my vertical axis vertical axis so now you can immediately see I can relate this vector um, with respect to these two axes so I can say that hang on a second um, this vector apparently it seems to have some angle okay this vector seems to have some angle here and what angle it is let us define this angle as some or name this angle as some theta okay that is how usually it is named theta of 5 and so now I have something to relate this vector with reference to the axis that I've got and let us define uh, say that well the uh, length of this vector is r okay the length of this vector is r so from this point which is my point of origin of the vector to the end point this distance this magnitude is r and it is at an angle of theta with respect to my horizontal axis and usually we call horizontal axis as x and we call vertical axis as y okay this is the normal notations that people use so now um, we have the vector and we know that well how to relate the vectors with respect to the axis right so this particular formula or the way we represent this is called the phasor representation or um, polar representation okay it is called the polar representation polar representation so um, I can define this vector as I can call it as r angle theta okay sorry this is theta r angle theta and just make it correct it make it proper okay so it's ang r angle theta now fine um, from the geometrical perspective it makes sense r angle theta but uh, beyond beyond this I, I do not get much information out of this I, I know that well okay there is some vector which is an inclined at an angle theta with the horizontal axis but can I extract more information from other dimension okay so that information what I try to say is um, I can actually decompose this vector into two components okay and I can say I can represent that this vector as the sum of these two decomposed vector components so let us try to relate it um, with those 
projection so what we'll try to do is I'll try to project this guy on this axis okay I'll try to project this guy on this axis so I will say that okay um, this is the projection okay so this will be the projection right this will be the projection and we call it as the let us say um, edge projection or the horizontal projection or let us call it X projection let us call this guy as X projection and I will do project this vector on this axis like this and I will call this this vector that is formed because of the projection let's call it as Y projection okay now going back to the school days um, you may be knowing the basic trigonometry um, and then we can relate what will be the value of the X projection or the Y projection if I have certain vector inclined at certain angle okay so um, uh, you may be knowing from the trigonometric formula that cosine of theta cosine of theta is equal to um, Okay, let me recall <laughs> myself. Um, I think the cosine of theta is the um, adjacent side Okay, it is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse okay, and uh, Yeah, I think this is correct and sine of theta and the sine of theta sine of theta that we call it as the opposite side it is the opposite side divided by hypotenuse and we used to remember in our school days these two formulas as the cosine of theta cos theta is ah and sine theta is o oh. and <laughs> that used to be a short rule of thumb to remember that and you never know when it comes handy <laughs> okay so um, so if I try to relate this uh, cosine of theta with opposite adjacent side by hypotenuse, right? So adjacent side is the x projection. So can I say that cosine of theta is my x projection, okay, divided by r, r is this, right? r is this hypotenuse. And so I can say that, well, x projection, x projection is equal to r cos of theta. So r cos theta. Fine. This looks good. Now what about this guy? So um, let us try to replace the from the opposite side. So op what is opposite side? This opposite side um, is this. This is the opposite side, right? So if you see here, this this length and this length, they are both one and the same, right? So can I say that the opposite side is y projection? Y projection and hypotenuse, I know that is equal to r. So can I say that um, y projection, y projection is r sine theta? okay so now from the vector concept I can say that well I can represent this vector as a sum of the two projections okay and I can say that r cosine r angle theta can also be represented as the summation of r cos of theta plus r sine theta so now um, if you try to represent this entire uh, term is pointing in this direction right it is in the horizontal direction this entire term is pointing in the vertical direction and this guy is pointing at certain angle theta with respect to the horizontal axis Now this is more on a geometrical sense right but I cannot represent this in mathematical form I need to have some mathematical entity which is going to replace this horizontal and the vertical indication which I have mentioned here right in the mathematical sense uh, we'll come to that later but let us try and do some uh, uh, we'll take one or two examples in Octave and try to figure out what actually this means. Okay, so I will open the Octave console and uh, let us try to relate some of the things that we have seen here. Um, okay, so this is my Octave console. I'll try to bring it in the capture zone. This is my Octave console. Now, Octave apparently has a couple of uh, functions which can convert your polar coordinates into the Cartesian and the other way around okay so um, let us say that uh, okay so let's take first example let's take example number one example number one and I will say that fine I have one vector I have one vector where r is equal to one it is just a unit vector and theta and theta is equal to theta is equal to 45 degrees okay it is equal to 45 degrees and um, if you are familiar with the concept of radians you know that well the 45 degrees is also equivalent to pi by 4 
right we'll uh, we'll come to that later when we uh, examine the Euler's formula in more detail but either way you can say this right so now I want to know so what I'm trying to say is that if I have a vector okay so I have this coordinate system I have a coordinate system and what I'm saying is I have R so this guy is R is equal to 1 and this theta this theta is 45 degrees so what will be the values of the projections what will be the values of the projections here so I'm going to project this guy here and I'm going to project this guy here so I want to find the two Cartesian components of these this vector so this is the one of them and this is the other one and let us see how it is going to look like so I will open the Octave console back again so um, <clears throat> I think the formula is the polar 2 it is pole to cart pole to cart is the formula and uh, we specify the angle first okay and the the way we specify is we give the angles in radians so I will call it as pi by 4 okay okay automatically uh, will take the value of pi as 3.1416 whatever it is and so this is actually 45 degrees in terms of radians right and I will say that the value is 1 okay that is R and the third term is 0 and okay um, let's not worry about that what is the third term so basically we are interested in R and we are interested in basically R and theta okay so theta is pi by 4 and R is equal to 1 and let us see what happens so now we have we have two projections and we have three projections so this guy you can ignore this guy so what is trying to do is it is trying to project this vector in three dimensions okay rather than two dimensions it is trying to project uh, in three dimensions but we are interested currently in two dimensions only so what it says is that okay I will have two components one is X and another one is Y and the values of both of them are exactly same so it is going to decompose the vector it is going to decompose the vector into two components okay 0.7 and 0.7 now let us try to uh, see um, whether by adding these two vectors by adding the two projections do we get the original vector back because that was our uh, explanation right that uh, if I decompose I can decompose I can represent this vector in polar form as sum of two Cartesian components so let us try to verify whether we actually get it or not okay so um, go back to the Octave console and um, okay now there is one more formula um, that's called Cartesian to pro polar so I'll use cart it's a cart to polar okay this is another formula and there I'm going to specify the three coordinates and it is going to give me a, uh, the polar form representation of my three projections so I will say it is 0 0.707 707 okay this is my X component then again 0 0.707 this is my Y component and Z I'll just keep it as 0 I'm doing it in two dimension okay so let's see what happens right um, it doesn't look like does it look like um, 45 degrees no it doesn't look like 45 so something is wrong or what um, let's see see it has returned three values right this function so first uh, first one is supposed to be the angle okay the second one is supposed to be the magnitude and the third one I'm not sure what uh, what it is um, but we are not bothered about that okay so this one is point triple nine eight five so point triple nine eight five is close to one right so it says that okay if I have two vectors um, projected in two dimensions then the polar representation R I'm going to get it as one but what about this angle this angle is 0 0.7540 it is nowhere close to 45 degrees right now um, if you see closely this is actually the uh, representation in radians it is not in degrees right so um, what I'll do is answer 1 which will basically pick up 0 0.7850 and I'll convert into degrees and the way I can convert into degrees is multiply radians by 180 divided by pi okay and it gives you 45 degrees so from this I hope that it will be clear to you that when we try to project okay we, we try to project a vector into two, two dimensions or we can project in multiple dimensions then I can represent the vector in polar form as a Cartesian or the Cartesian into polar in both the ways it is possible and um, but there is a uh, there is a problem here is that if you want to represent it like this then you have to specify 
um, explicitly that which vector is pointing in what direction, although it is implied that well cosine of theta is going to point in horizontal direction and this is going to be in vertical direction. But in terms of mathematics, it is still not very clear. Okay, um, when you do the mathematical manipulation, these two terms when added, uh, they will simply add onto each other and it's going to give you the third quantity. Okay, but uh, uh, if you see that they, are, they add onto each other, but in such a way that they are perpendicular to each other, right? So that um, ambiguity is not resolved here. And that ambiguity will be resolved by the Euler's formula. So um, we'll look in the next video, um, the Euler's formula, and I will try to relate the um, projection that we have, the vector projections for the Euler's formula, and also we'll try to decompose the Euler's formula um, into time and frequency. Okay, so I hope you have enjoyed this video, and uh, I will see you in the next video.